England have named their official training squad for Euro 2024. There's 33 names on it. I've got it in front of me here. Let's react to it. At the end of this video, I'm going to be cutting seven names. Of course, we've got to get this down to 26. This is a long, old list. Seven names are going to go. I want you guys at home to comment right now who you think those seven names should be. Let's start with the goalkeepers. And Dean Henderson makes the grade. He's really benefited like a lot of this squad. There's a lot of Palace players in this squad from the Oli Glasner effect. And he has put up 18 Premier League starts this season. He's kept four clean sheets under Oli Glasner. And he started all but one game under the Austrian. Palace's resurgent has been absolutely beautiful to watch. Dean Henderson has played a major role in that. He looks very solid on the ball, very commanding coming from crosses. It's nice to see him back in the England setup. Jordan Pickford is, of course, in there as well. Absolutely no surprise. I think he's probably been one of the three best goalkeepers in the Premier League this season. He was very close to making my Premier League team of the season flat out. Everton have got the fourth best defensive record in the league, despite their position. His history of work for the national team has been remarkable. One of the few goalkeepers in my memory that has been better for his country than his club. Aaron Ramsdale also makes the 33. Just the six Premier League starts for him this season, so not an awful lot of game time being fully usurped by David Rye, but he's been in and amongst it for England in the past, and quite frankly, there's not a lot of other goalkeeping options. Nick Pope hasn't recovered in time. Johnston has been usurped by Dean Henderson and is injured for the entire tournament. That leaves our fourth choice... James Trafford. And this has definitely caused a bit of a stir online, hasn't it? He didn't have a good season at Burnley following that big money move from Manchester City. In fact, Burnley looked a lot more solid towards the back end of the season when he was replaced by Arta Muric. But the way the England setup works is this clear lineal progression through the youth age groups, England's DNA and all that up to the first team. And Trafford has done it all at the youth ages. You think back to that under 21 European Championships that he won with the penalty save against Spain, you can see why he's been included in the long list of 33. One goalkeeper is not going to go, definitely. That's probably going to be James Trafford. But... Is it better to give a young goalkeeper the opportunity to be amongst the squad in the camp around experienced pros? In my opinion, it absolutely is. You have to have four goalkeepers just to share the workload when you've got a 33-man squad. If Trafford gains valuable experience and is better for it in the future, this is a good decision. Let's go to the back line where you've got Jared Bramthwaite, who does get the call up despite the fact he didn't play in either of the friendlies against Brazil or Belgium but he's had a remarkable season a breakthrough Premier League campaign alongside an experienced player like James Tarkovsky his physicality adds something to this England setup at six foot five he's excellent in both boxes but he's also really good on the ball and he also has the bonus of being a left footer Lewis Dunk also gets the 33 man nod not surprised to see him in the 33 I think the 26 might be a question mark over that his performances against Brazil and Belgium in the friendlies weren't particularly great. Romelu Lukaku gave him a torrid time against Belgium and in the Europa League for Roma. And there are definitely question marks and fair question marks, I think, as to whether Dunk's ceiling is just below that high European standard. Now, that's not to say he shouldn't go for the 26. We've seen Connor Cody go in the past with England squads because you do need experience and not all of this 26-man squad are going to play. So Lewis Dunk might go for that reason but there are some high quality young players in this setup now. Great to see Joe Gomez also included. He's had a brilliant season. He's put up the ninth most minutes of any Liverpool player in the Premier League this season. The majority of those have come at left back. And I think his inclusion is pretty telling of our left back issues. We have some real defensive problems going into this tournament. We do. Injuries have hit us hard and you can see that Gareth Southgate, with the amount of defenders he's got here, is trying to cover his own back a bit. As for Mark Gahey, another Crystal Palace inclusion, but not really because of Oli Glasner. He hasn't played 90 minutes since January. He's going for experience, to gain experience, even if he isn't part of the 26 because he's had those injury problems. It's great to see him in a 33 man. It's also great to see Esri Konsa in there. Obviously, Gareth Southgate wanted to take Ben White. Ben White is one of the outstanding players in the Premier League. He's maybe been our best right back. But if you can't take a right back centre back hybrid like Ben White, Esri Konsa is kind of the next guy in a similar mould. For me, he is a very strong contender to go as part of the 26 because of that versatility. As we make our way down the list, the injury plagued players continue to pop up really. 
Harry Maguire has had no football since April now. That's a worrying sign for a player that is a key component to Gareth Southgate's side. You look back to our best tournament under him, Euro 2020. We conceded no goals from open play with him and Stones at centre-back. It's imperative he's fit. People in the comments will be saying he shouldn't even be going. That is a rubbish. He's actually had a good season for Manchester United and he's always reliable for England. Another player a bit like James Trafford, a young player that's got a call up, a surprise call up today, Jarrell Quonsa. He's had such an impressive season for Liverpool. Anybody who's watched my recent videos will know how much I love him. Potentially the heir to the Virgil van Dijk throne. Extremely imposing, physically also very gifted on the ball. An intelligent reader of the game. It's great to see him in the 33. I'd be very surprised if he made the 26, but his valuable experience. More injury issues as we head to left back. Ben Chilwell's not even included. He's not even on the roster here. Luke Shaw has got the nod despite only completing 190 minutes since January. He's made just 12 starts this season, and it's indicative of a problem Gareth Southgate is going to face. Behind Luke Shaw, he's got no cover. Potentially Joe Gomez can play there. But Kieran Trippier is also going to have to get minutes at left back. He's done it before in an England shirt and he's a leading contender to start that first game if Luke Shaw isn't fit. John Stones also hasn't played a 90 minutes like Maguire since the end of April, I think. Obviously one of our most talented players, our best centre back when he's fit. No doubt about that. The partnership with Maguire has stood the test of international time really. But he's been injured. Shaw's been injured, Maguire's been injured, Gahey's been injured. I'm worried. And that takes us to Trippier, who, like I said, might have to start a left back in the opening game. He hasn't played a 90 minutes since February. I'm worried about this back line. I am worried about it. You can see why Southgate has taken so many defenders. How many has he taken here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 defenders. Kyle Walker makes up the final name, obviously a nailed on selection, our best 1v1 defender if we come up against France and Kylian Mbappe is in there, you want Kyle Walker in that right back slot, don't you? But what it does mean is there's no Reese James. Now, it's not a huge surprise, he's been injured 90% of the season, he's made a return recently though, an assist on his debut, then he kicked out against Brighton in really sort of petulant fashion. He's banned. He's going to be banned for the first three games of next season. And he's just not put up enough minutes. Into the midfield, and this is where things start to get spicy. Trent is listed as a midfielder. For me, this is the official FA release. This is an important point. Because it's telling that Gareth now sees Trent almost exclusively as a midfielder. In his recent friendly appearances for England, Trent has worn the number eight. He's played alongside Declan Rice, and I think he's a very strong candidate to start the opening game in midfield in that role. People at home will be commenting saying, oh, it's typical England. Why are you playing him out of position? What are you doing? Well, he inverts into that role anyway, first and foremost for Liverpool. With Kyle Walker in the right-back slot, he has a much, much higher level of defensive cover outside him, allowing him to focus on his creativity, his cross-field passing, his progressive passing, the things that make him so special. When he's played for England in that eight role, he's been our best player pretty much every time. We don't have many players in the double pivot position that can create from deep. It's true. Trent can. Trent is a totally unique brand of footballer and I really want I want to see him start in the central midfield role for England. Conor Gallagher also gets selected 37 starts for Chelsea this season very very underrated for me. Cole Palmer's obviously been their player of the year. Conor Gallagher is in the conversation for second place. You'd think of Malo Gusto had a very good year. Moises Caicedo definitely came into his own second half of the season. But Conor Gallagher, across the course of the season, was just so consistent. These numbers really stack up. Pochettino absolutely trusts him. Gareth Southgate trusts him. And he is a good option off the bench when you need a bit of energy injected into the side. If things are looking a bit stodgy, I like Conor Gallagher coming off the bench for England. It's also great to see Curtis Jones getting the nod. There would have been a lot of Liverpool fans and regular football fans that if you ask them which of the two young Liverpool midfielders that are English, Harvey Elliott or Curtis Jones, are going to get the nod, would have sided with Harvey Elliott. But what England lack, for sure, we can all see it, is depth in the double pivot position. Harvey Elliott is much better in the final third. He can even come off the right. But you think of the number 10 and right wing options we've got, Saka, Palmer, Foden, Bellingham, Madison, 
competition's tough there. There's much more realistic shots of getting in the double pivot role. And I'm always battered whenever I post anything about Curtis Jones from Liverpool fans and neutral football fans when I talk about his ball retention. I think he retains the ball really nicely at high pace. He's able to drive past players very effectively. His progressive carry numbers are exceptional. His ball retention in terms of his passing and simple passing is excellent. He is an outside shout for a double pivot shout. The issue is he's up against two other extremely talented, very young players. One of those players is Kobe Mainu, who has already got game time recently under Gareth Southgate, and I do think that is a major factor. He was brilliant when he came on against Brazil, excellent against Belgium. He's having to play in a frankly dreadful Manchester United midfield in terms of its structure. He looks so much better in a structured midfield. When you put Kobe Maynard alongside Declan Rice, you are going to see a star player. His individual ability is sky high. He stands a chance of starting, Kobe Maynu. He's definitely going to be in the 26, surely. As is Declan Rice. Don't really need to discuss him too much. He's one of our best players. He's just an absolute nailed on star. And that leaves us with the surprise addition, the brilliant addition of Adam Wharton, who, when he arrived in January for that £20 million from Blackburn, would not have thought he would get a Euro 2024 call-up in a million years. He was great for Blackburn, don't get me wrong, but the jump is huge. He's only got one appearance for England's under-21s. And since Glasner's arrival, he's been remarkable. He's been one of the best midfielders in the league. And hats off to Gareth Southgate for calling him up. People were ready and waiting in the wings to hammer Southgate for not calling up a player like Adam Orton to an extended training squad. Now, he might not go, but like Gerald Quanza, like James Trafford, it's important you get these young players minutes in and amongst the squad, even if they're not going to go with the 26. And I have to say, when I look at the double pivot slots... Form coming into it, the style of player he is, there's every chance he could be in the 26. Let's come back to it at the end. When I wipe players out, let's see if Water makes the grade. And whilst we're praising Southgate, I think well done for not picking Jordan Henderson. It's an obvious call because he's had a poor season at Ajax and has been spending time in Saudi and isn't up to the standard of the other players on this list. But I think a lot of us were kind of still expecting to see Henderson on the team sheet or at least on the long list. But well done, Gareth. I think it's the right decision. Moving into the forwards, Jude Bellingham is included as a forward because, of course, that's where he's been playing for Real Madrid, you would think. But we can expect him to play in that 10 role. Absolutely going to be part of the 26. He's one of our, if not our best player. Jared Bowen also makes the long list. Another player that's in real contention to make the 26. 16 goals, 6 assists. He's at 0.3 expected assists per 90. That puts him in the top 10% of European forwards. He's had an amazing season for West Ham. Another eagle, Eberichi Eze, makes the grade and this one brings a massive smile to my face. I'm so happy about it. And the reason for that is, number one, he's a bloody lovely guy. Number two, he has had an amazing season under Oli Glasner. He's had injury problems, but recently the form he showed, nine goals and assists in 11 games, his link up with Elise, his ability to just glide past players and create chances out of nothing, score fantastic goals, his ball striking, Eze has it all. If he could stay fit for a full campaign, we would be talking about a 70, 80 million pound player. Phil Foden, obviously, our most naturally talented player. 27 goals, 11 assists, the Premier League player of the season. He's a nailed on starter now. There were conversations at the last tournament. Does Phil Foden start? Where do you feel? Fo Phil Foden starts. He might be alongside Bellingham and Kane, our best player. Jack Grealish has also made the grade. Just 390 minutes in the whole of 2024 so far. He's really struggled for fitness and form at Manchester City in the second half of the season. But for England, he is a difference maker. His ability in 1v1s from wide areas is probably the best in the squad. And the left wing slot, there's a little bit more competition for that place than there is in many of the other roles in the team, which it feels like a lockdown. A player competing for that left wing slot is Anthony Gordon. 11 goals, 10 assists in the Premier League. A remarkable campaign. One of the hardest working players in this England setup. Off the ball. What Eddie Howe has been able to turn this guy into is a monster. He is also the kind of player that if you bring on off the bench can make something happen. Be it winning a penalty, winning a foul outside the box. I feel like Anthony Gordon could have a big impact at this tournament for England. He should definitely be part of the 26 now. A couple of months ago when I was doing my 26, I was thinking, ah, do you take him? His form towards the back end of the season has just 
cemented him as a guarantee. Harry Kane, we don't need to discuss. The best striker in world football, our captain, starting every single game for us. James Madison, though, I think he could be in a bit of trouble when it comes to the 26. And there's no way I was saying that at the start of the season. I was saying this is one of England's best players. But with the form that Eberici Eze has shown towards the back end of the season, you have to argue that it's between those two for that role. And James Madison's form's off a cliff. Just one goal since October. Four assists in that time as well. He's had an injury problem, as happens quite regularly for James Madison. But since returning from that injury problem, he hasn't looked himself. When Eze came back from his injury problem, he's looked bang on it. Now, I think it's partly down to the way Tottenham have finished the season. It's not been good, but he's a contributing factor in that too. I think he could be in trouble. Cole Palmer is obviously going. He's our backup right winger, you would say, behind Bakayo Saka. He's going to have a major impact. I fully expect him to come onto the pitch, maybe start a couple of games as well and score goals. Everything Cole Palmer touches turns to gold right now. As is Bukayo Saka, who's put up 20 goals, 14 assists, like it's nothing, as part of one of the best sides in Europe. You know, Arsenal might have crashed out of the Champions League to Bayern Munich, but their all-round play and what they've been able to do, live with Manchester City for 99% of the season, makes them one of the best teams in the world. And Bukayo Saka is one of the best players in that best team. That leaves the final two names, Ivan Toney and Oli Watkins. Oli Watkins, who has been one of the three best players in the Premier League this season, the most assists of any player, whilst also scoring for fun without penalties in an Aston Villa side that are making history and got into the top four, leading the line, running the channels. Amazing back-to-goal ability. And then Ivan Toney, who hasn't really had a great second half of the season since coming back from the ban, just the four goals, injury problems, stop-start... I'm a little bit surprised that he's in the 33. What that does mean is that there's no Marcus Rashford and there is no Dominic Solanke. Solanke's had a brilliant season for Bournemouth. Marcus Rashford has had a poor season for Manchester United. It felt like it was Rashford versus Gordon. Those are your two roadrunners. Those are the two players that can get in behind. There's a lot of this England squad that want the ball to feet. Gordon and Rashford can spread the play. Gordon's come out on top. Rashford has not done enough. His off-the-ball work has left a lot to be desired in the second half of the season. Some of the abuse he's got has gone way too far. And sadly, he's not quite made the 33. So that leaves us having to cut seven players, which is difficult, man. It's difficult. James Trafford, though, makes up your first. You only need three goalkeepers. You must take three goalkeepers. I often see people saying, why don't you just take two? You have to take three. It's a, it's a rule. Let's go into the defenders. And I know he's had a great season but I think it's one tournament too early for Jarrell Kwanzaa. He's been brilliant for Liverpool, like I said earlier, but feels a little bit like he's been called up to gain that experience. Because of the defensive injury issues, I think you can only axe one more defender. You almost have to take nine. Luke Shaw, as Gareth Southgate has just confirmed in his press conference, is extremely unlikely. I think you probably don't take Lewis Dunk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross out Lewis Dunk. It's unfortunate for him, I know, but... I just think the showings in the Europa League and the recent friendlies have just changed something slightly in my head. Do you know what I'm also going to say? You don't take Mark Gahey. I think with the amount of injuries we've already got in that back line, if you take another player who's coming back from injury, you've got quite a lot of centre-backs in there. You've still got Stones, you've still got Maguire, you've still got Conce, you've still got Jared Branthwaite, you've got Joe Gomez who can play there as well. I don't think you need Mark Gahey to. Into the midfield and... Difficult because Adam Wharton's call up feels so out of the blue, but I'm going to get rid of Curtis Jones. There's something about Adam Wharton that is really, really playing on my mind. I think we could be seeing the emergence of an absolute superstar. No offense to Curtis Jones, he's had a great season. I just think Adam Wharton's had a better one. So that's five gone, and that leaves the forwards. I think it's James Madison or Reza. You've got to pick between the two. I'm going to get rid of James Madison. Eze has simply finished the season stronger. He offers a slightly different profile to James Madison as well in that he can also play wide if you absolutely need him to. James Madison's form tailing off is just so disappointing, man. And finally, Ivan Tony doesn't go for me. The second half of the season hasn't been good enough. I cross him out as the seventh player who doesn't go on the plane. So that's my 26-man England squad based on the 33 here. It's going to change, though, definitely, because those injuries in the back line, particularly to Luke Shaw, look like they're going to be really bad. If Luke Shaw makes the plane, he's a miracle worker.